bam, Sergeant America coming back at you. Uh, this is a tribute to 12-year-old me. Uh, <laughs> uh, I think we often talk about like our first comic or how we got started and things like that. I remember going down in uh, my little hometown and going to the grocery store and on the very bottom shelf of all the magazines there was a couple comics and this was I think just before there got to be a glut of comics into the industry um, but probably the beginning of it this was uh, young me and what I picked out so DP7 is uh, displaced paranormal and a group of seven people uh, DC in like uh, 85, 86 came up with this group. It was a group of seven people that were exposed to some kind of outside source, whether if it was a meteor or uh, some environmental issue, which gave them all powers. Uh, a lot of them had powers that were out of control, so they were put into a facility, some of them nearly against their own will. Uh, they band together and they finally decide they're going to break out and they start to figure out that the people that are holding them are pretty much evil. The, the group who's holding them also wants to know about their powers and incorporate them into the group. And as you soon find out that these people have their powers, uh, the bad guys are also powered up. And so it gets to be, I guess that you know, the minor, minor Avengers kind of take on it or, um, where you end up with uh, an interesting story of a group being together because they have to be together. I think uh, it's been covered many a time, just recently, as much as Secret Six, um, where will these people stay together? A lot of them sometimes don't like each other. They each have a personality and a taste, so sometimes those rub against each other. And it's kind of tough when you're forced into liking or tolerating somebody because there's something bigger going on. Um, it's it been interesting just to, to reread these books to, to see if 12 year old me uh, did a good choice on picking out some of these things. Uh, and Displaced Paranormal 7, DP7, uh, one, I didn't expect it to ever be in a trade. Um, it's uh, two trades. I have not been able to locate the second one. This one just I happened to find in my comic shop. Uh, definitely am thankful for my for having a comic shop near me that I can just look around and explore and come across goodies like this. Um, it was definitely enjoyable to reread the story. This one I definitely uh, felt held up to everything I remembered it to be. It was written probably at a smarter level than what I could enjoy or, or know about as a, as a 12 year old, but it was definitely enjoyable to read this, to go back through it. It, it reignited each memory of the book that I had and seeing as, you know, I've gone all these years now and finally finding it, it was definitely the thing that I, I, you know, you're always worried, you know, you, you rewatch an old movie and you shake your head and can't believe that you enjoyed it. This one did. This one was good. This was, maybe that's why I enjoyed it. It was written above my level and I wanted to know more. So DP7, definitely a recommendation by me. I happened to mention in my comic book shop that I really liked an old series of uh, comics from Continuity Comics. During the glut, they were one of them to disappear. Uh, this was Neil Adams who wrote this, uh, drew the first issue, and then someone else followed through afterwards. Uh, but he continued to write it. And Armor was definitely an interesting series. This was uh, a take on th uh, a Canadian family who had aliens invade, um, kidnap the, the children, and then take them into space. The children, they were late teens, maybe early 20s. Um, with this, it was the idea on two brothers, uh, Armor and Silver Streak, are their superhero names, Jack and Jacques. And with the, the two, they get brought up into a space station, and Jack, Armor, is taught to become a fighter and hone his skills. His armor becomes weapons as he detaches them, their blades, their projectiles, their bow staff, their nunchucks, 
So it's all these weapons on his armor. And his brother Silverstreak has incredible speed, but can also project uh, high amounts of energy out of his hands. Think Havoc. Um, it was very... Uh, <laughs> it was... The 12-year-old me really loved it. Uh, coming back, I enjoyed the series. Uh, the nostalgia maybe helped out a lot. Uh, but as I read it, uh, I, I mentioned there's just a little blurb here, but there is uh, another issue where it is entirely, there's like four bubbles of uh, dialogue, and I don't think you could ever see that anymore on a cover. A, car, a cover is meant to be art now, it seems. It's meant to be up on your wall. You're meant to pay the five, six, seven bucks, the ten bucks for variants. So you don't put word bubbles on your covers anymore. It was interesting to go back and, and read this. There is a lot of dialogue in there. Um, we don't see that anymore. And, I mean, a lot of it is just because they wanted to tell, I think, a bigger story. Uh, very often the artwork does a very good job with uh, telling what's going on. But, as you can see, words, words, words. We got lots of words. Uh, but, I mean, there was interesting fighting, interesting motorcycle riding. But this was all set up for the next issue, which is in space, where they actually have their powers. This is just the beginning where they're the young, uh, the young guys. Reading it now, you know, if I were to pick this up, oh boy, I mean, you know, like I said, things we're not used to. A lot of dialogue. Um, maybe not as big a hook to make you want to continue reading it. We're always asking first issue. What needs to be in a first issue to make you read second issue? So... This one touched back on all the nostalgia, but um, and it was good as it continues along. It tells a wonderful story, uh, which feeds into, I guess, some now the people who decompress their stories and end up having it told, you know, through two, you know, one story through two trades. Uh, it's interesting for me to read issue to issue and remember that I had to wait month to month for this. Uh, so evidently I was hungry. I was hungry for comics. This was a wonderful uh, $2 buy in my youth, and uh, my shop was very excellent, gave me a very good deal, so it was nearly a, a, a cover price for almost all of them. So uh, definitely appreciative to be able to touch back, to say hello to 12-year-old me again, uh, to read comics for comics' sake. <laughs> and definitely want to uh, continue to thank the community I recommend these books. I love everything that you guys talk about that you recommend or don't recommend. Uh, I continue to enjoy talking to everybody about this. So continue making your videos. Continue talking. Please keep commenting. And uh, that's what it's all about. Enjoy. Catchphrase.